so hello and good morning everyone i am from an automation and today we will discuss about the profibus repeater uh, why we will use a repeater for a profibus nodes and what is the necessary purpose for which the profibus repeater will work so <coughs> let's start the video also a minute so this is a standard Siemens repeater module looks like okay you can see here the PG OP port to communicate with PC via MPI cable or from Profibus to MPI converter repeat and pump converter and these two terminal was used for node one and this two terminal is new used for node two. For two different nodes, we can use one repeater to communicate the propagus <coughs> system in the line. So, what is RS485 repeater? RS485 repeater is amplify the data signal that is amplitude, rate, slope, and signal with all bus lines and couples exit segments. Application of RS485 repeater. The RS485 repeater connects two Profibus or MPI segments using the RS485 technology with maximum 32 nodes. It enables the transfer rate from 9.6 Kbps to 12 Mbps. You need an RS485 repeater if the, mode, the, the network is more than 32 nodes available in the system and the maximum is 127 including repeater are connected to the bus. Segments are operated underground on the bus electrical isolation of segment the maximum cable length of the bus segment is exceeded see the table below uh, we will discuss about uh, this thing in the sometime later help is required during the commissioning switch for the disconnecting system display for the bus activity disconnecting a bus segment in the case of in incorrectly instead terminal terminating register the signals are to be generated in amplified amplitude and time so the point is the maximum cable length of a bus is extended in the cable you are described <coughs> by us. Actually where the cable cable length is about to reach 100, 100 meters or 80 meters we will generally use a repeater otherwise the signal voltage of the repeater of a profibus network will down and the uh, 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 modules after the 80 meters or 100 meters are disconnected or not communicating properly with the main system or the controller. So we use the 3 to 12 Mbps for 100 meter, 1.5 Mbps 200 meter. So generally the maximum cable length we consider for a line is 80 meter rather than 100 meters theoretically it is 100 meters but after 80 meters sometimes the key, uh, communication strength is low actually the uh, profibus segment uh, profibus uh, protocol is uh, communicated with the 5 volt uh, supply and uh, uh, after the 80 meters or 100 meters uh, the uh, voltage of the, the profibus network is quite low 3.3 volt is the tolerance level and the minimum level of the to communicate with any profibus node in the system in below the 3.3 volt that is uh, one of the uh, 80 meters the profibus network does not operate properly or communicate, not communicate with the module after the 80 meter if the voltage level is quite down below the 3.3 volt so here is the tolerance level uh, described in the uh, chart for better understanding here we can see the 3 to 12 mbps speed if we required then 100 meter is the maximum cable length after that it will you will have to put a repeater in the line and then 1.5 mbps 200 meter 500 kbps 400 meter and 9.6 to 187.5 kbps 1000 mm cable length you can communicate so, design of the RS485 repeater, you can see the design of the RS485 repeater. Uh, we discussed uh, in the video in the first time, the uh, standard Siemens repeaters look like. So, this is the diagram view of the Siemens repeater. You can see uh, 
they are have the terminal of L plus and M. It's the 24 volt supply voltage which have to be there externally from SMPS or some uh, some other sources like drive sources or where you can get the 24 volt we can connect with this to terminal. They are have a PE terminal. This is a potential arcing terminal. You, can, you, you will have to arc the repeater properly to communicate and operate proper in a proper way. And this is the number one connecting for the RS peripheral repeater power supply pin M5.2 the underground difference that is that is for you want to mount under voltage difference between the terminal A2 and B2. Okay. Uh, now we will see the number two, the shielded underground cable going through the cable field bus segment for one and two. So look, this is the two screw is used to hold the cable of profibus, profibus cable, to, which are connected to A1B1 and A1B1 dash. Actually, A1B1 is an input and A1B1 is a uh, output. Here A1 B1 from controller we will use to uh, put a cable to A1 B1. This so A1 is red and B1 is green and uh, output to other controller drive uh, agitators and anything from A1 and B2 that is green and red. And this is the on off cable for S1. S1 means the fast but bus nodes. The fast network of the uh, repeater will use on or off for fast 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 repeater fast uh, network uh, propulsion network and this is a pgpc of mode changing option and this you can see here is a 9 pin d connector which is used to connect to the pg or pc or operating system or esos to for communicate the line uh, to communicate with the other lines uh, modules via this repeater you can connect there the MPI cable and you can connect any other any communication system or uh, any controller or drives or VFDs via this uh, PGPC interface uh, which are connected to this profibus network and here is the second bus here you can connect a second bus profibus network bus to communicate other field device or other controller via this you, you just need to change this to change this mode to communicate this PG, PG or PC with the network 1 and network 2 in the same way they are a screw for holding the profibus cable for A2 B2 and A2 A2 dash B2 dash they are also A2 B2 means input and A2 B2 dash means output so there have a separate S2, S2 the signal 2. You have a separate on-off switch for network bus 2 also. And you can see the DP1, DP2, this is the two uh, lights, indicating lights, indicating LEDs here and the 24 volt supply DC indicating light also here. So if you set a profibus network with RS45, what will happen? The number of RS45 repeater in series must be configured in step 7. So in, in, time of, in time of series connection, you will must need to connect and configure the system or any VMT, drive, controller, anything you will have to configure with step 7 with GSD or inbuilt system, inbuilt module in the step 7. Up to 9 RS4 repeater can may be connected in series. Only up to 9 uh, VFD drive controller and anything can be connected in RS4 repeater in series. The maximum cable in between the nodes and RS4 repeater must not exceed the value listed in the table below. The cable, cable length between the nodes, the two nodes, RS4 repeater must, must not be exceed the value. So if we view the transmission rate from the controller is 9.6 to 187.5 kbps, you will <coughs> have to keep uh, think about the distance of 10,000 meter. In 500 kbps, you need to 4,000 meter. In 1.5 kbps, you need to 1,000 meter. In 3 to 12 mbps, you need to set the uh, <coughs> think about the uh, maximum cable length is between 1,000 meter. Here we can see how the repeater will mount and demount from any rail 
which is used to uh, fix in the panel so here is the uh, jockey key in the back side of the repeater we need to just pull down uh, the system uh, to <coughs> removing the system removing the repeater from pin rail or uh, connect to the pin rail this is just like mcb uh, other mcb and other controller used to be put and put, put in and put out from the pin rail just like that we need to just uh, put an screwdriver and press upward to uh, move the uh, key and the, the repeater will smoothly kept out from the pin rail So there is a system configuration we can see so where we will need to how we will consider a repeater in that system. So you can see there are a S7300 PLC we can consider, uh, but you can uh, you can imagine every PLC you can choose any PLC from this side. This is the must you think it's a master controller not the CPU okay so we use the controller for these three drives there's a control unit of the drive and this is the power unit of the drive so the uh, profibus network is always connected to the control unit so we define the control unit as a uh, profibus network master <coughs> so here you can see controller are connected with this and other two modules are imagine other two modules are connected somewhere other side in the plant which cable length is more than 100 meters or 80 meters so we will use a repeater for communicate other two drives for the two segments of the other plant to communicate with the cpu or data transfer or anything by the profibus network by the cpu is connected via the repeater <coughs> So this is the profibus repeater actually look like it's a hand on experience in the front room it's a side room where you can see the MLAP 9 bar and other details and nomenclatures you can find on the right side of the repeater this is the back side and this is the front side so how a Siemens repeater look like when, it, when it's connected in a product mode So you can see <coughs> how a Siemens repeater look like when it is connected. In the, in the third picture you can see the DP1 is constantly blinking and DC24 is constantly blinking. So if the DP1 communication LED is constantly blinking then you can think that the in a profibus node or repeater is must not work working and it will not communicate with the other system the, in a healthy system the tp1 led will con con continuously blink okay you can see l1 and m connected with the 24 volt that uh, that's why the 24 volt is continuously blink with green and tp1 is continuously blink with the orange light this is the healthy network signal if the dp1 node is continuously high or blink continuously high it will not operating which means it will not the process mode is not healthy or your repeater is not communicate with this process network you need to change the repeater or the cable signals or cable seals to communicate like this we will have to reach this position to communicate with any other things in any other connected device connected with the secondary side of the network is the basic bus segment uh, the picto pictorial view of a repeater you can see bus segment 1 and bus segment 2 are connected you can see the repeater and this is a controller both side you can connect to this and like this So thank you. Have a nice day for everyone to view our uh, video. If you like this video, you like this, you please uh, press the like button and please do like, uh, please do subscribe my channel for more update. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye bye.